Welcome back guys. Well, this has to be the warmest uh, November in history. And I'm here in uh, just a little bit of hiking. We're gonna go find some ramp seeds. That's my goal for today. So that's wild leek. Let's go have a look in the forest. So I harvested wild leek in here in the spring and it was so delicious. I made ramp butter. They're also called ramps and uh, you know, some salads with them. So I wanna have my own um, you know, wild garden at home. So what I'm gonna try to do today is harvest some of those seeds. They look like little black balls. Um, they kind of look like my earrings actually. Uh, so that's what we're looking for. It might be a bit challenging uh, this time of year in the forest, but the uh, wild leek goes to seed in September and it's the beginning of November. So we're just gonna see if some are left. That'd be a real bonus. Uh, we'll also take a look for any other wild um, native species of plants that I can harvest some seeds from so I can add to my garden. So one thing I have here is my Garmin GPS 64S and I'm gonna go to the Waypoint Manager and uh, see, I've got all my wild edibles logged in here. So I went in the spring, you know, some ginger, there's ramps, fiddleheads, uh, some wild strawberries. So all you do is you click on the ramps and it will navigate me there. Well, looks like I gotta go in Northeast. So I love collecting seeds and nuts uh, that are native to our region and I like to grow things. Starting to develop a little bit of a green thumb I found. So uh, last year I had a lot of success um, with growing pawpaw trees from seed. That's a tree in the Carolinian forest. So I grew about six of those off of some seeds. I also grew a couple of butternuts, which are an endangered nut tree in this area. So it was pretty exciting. Um, there's some very specific methods you have to use to, uh, to grow um, seeds. It's not just as simple as planting them. They don't necessarily come up that season. And we'll talk about that today too. On our first stop here, we have some goldenrod that's gone to seed. You guys can see here, um, we've got the goldenrod in my cabin. We have just tons of it. It's yellow, right? It's uh, big yellow fronds and now it's all gone to seed. So goldenrod's excellent for pollinator. It's a great medicinal plant. So I'm gonna collect some of my um, first little seeds here. So you sort of take off the little floof with a seed attached to the bottom there. There's lots of it there. And I've got a special little container to put it in. Let me show you. What I brought with me to kind of collect my seeds are these little um, little containers here that uh, hold tea. So I used to drink a lot of David's tea. So uh, they're just like little metal canisters with little screw top lids. Uh, so I can organize my seeds for now in the field. So I can just put them in here. As you go through the forest, you can see all kinds of seeds here. I mean, sometimes what I do in my own garden, I do have some actual asters. Um, is I, you know, I shake this and kind of let the <laughs> seeds go everywhere. Just like that. <laughs> Royce is gonna help me. You know, I was in here a couple weeks ago and it was snowing and I ended up getting a huge flush of oyster mushroom. So it was two pounds, guys. When I brought it home, it was incredibly large and I put it in my dehydrator. So I've got lots of mushrooms for soup this winter. I'm really excited about that. In the springtime, I take you guys in a forest walk always and we talk about hepatica. So take a look at hepatica in the fall. Isn't that a gorgeous plant? They call it a hepatica because it kind of looks like the lobes of a liver. Um, so I see that quite often, one of the earliest bloomers in the spring, and that's what it looks like in the fall. Oh, that ah, false alarm. I'm kind of looking for a, a crown like this, like a little ball of flowers here with uh, black seeds on top, but this is not what I'm looking for. Darn. Well, close, but no cigar. Wrong color, wrong plant. Darn. If you thought hunting for ramps in the spring was hard, especially because they're becoming more um, hard to find and scarce in some areas, finding them in the fall is really difficult. The forest floor is all brown, there's leaves, it's so hard to find these little stems with these little black balls on top. So I'm constantly scanning the ground and thank goodness I've recorded where ramps have been uh, in the spring on my little GPS. Take a look at this fern, isn't this just beautiful? Nice little shock of green on the uh, brown forest floor. Some of these ferns retain their green color for quite some time. Well, of course, we're not always just looking for seeds and things like that. Take a look at this, guys. This beautiful mushroom right here. Let's take a look. Nice. Excellent. Excellent bit of turkey tail there. It's kind of old. Flushed a little bit earlier all the way down this tree, even to the bottom. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at the nice bands of color. And amongst this fern here, I want to show you a really cool plant. This is horsetail. 
In the spring, I harvest horsetail to make a beautiful, nice tea. And as you can see here, it's a, it sort of grows in these little sections. So there's some horsetail for you. Typically grows near wet areas. As you can see, it's a little swampy around here. As you can see, it's all along here and, oh yeah, right in there, look at that. There's a little pond or something in there. So that explains why we're seeing all this horsetail here. It's pretty cool. Some people ask me what um, horsetail tea tastes like, and it really tastes like green tea, to be quite honest. There's a little bit of a creamy flavor to it. So I really enjoy that in a nice spring morning. I harvest the horsetail tea fresh, but I dry it for winter use as well. Wild leek or ramps are also found in lots of uh, rich woodland areas there, so where there's a lot of um, organic matter. So this is like a perfect environment for them. That's where I get them in the spring. But it's like a game of where's Waldo trying to find these little seeds. I'll take a look at this beautiful blue seed. This is not what I'm looking for. Just kind of wonder if that's from a blue bead lily. I think I'm going to collect that one and we'll uh, have a little spring surprise and see what comes up. And I've got my uh, socks tucked into my pants and my boots because it's tick season with all these leaves. I don't want to get a tick or Lyme disease, so be careful guys. Of course, Royce loves sitting and playing in the leaves and he's on some tick medication too because gosh, I'd never find them on his coat. So as I was mentioning earlier, uh, it's not always easy to just you know get a seed from the forest, put it in the ground, expect it to come up right away. For example, a lot of seeds have to go through a few different you know, winter, spring cycles to actually germinate. And ramp seeds are like that. They take uh, a couple of winters um, before they can actually germinate. So I've purchased ramp seeds before from someone and uh, basically, you know, you can artificially induce this, um, this process by, you know, giving them X number of days in, at room temperature and X number of days, you know, in your fridge and then repeating the cycle a couple of times. And then that spring you can plant them and you'll get them that year. So that's pretty exciting. So I picked up this book a long time ago. Uh, this is a book actually specifically for Southern Ontario, but you may be able to find the data online for your location. It's the Native Seed Identification and Cultivation Guide. So it discusses uh, how to properly take care of seeds and how to plant them and when to expect your plant or tree to come up. For example, I, uh, I was able to harvest and plant butternut and have success with that. And so this, this book tells you about the identification, when you can get your seeds, like this one basically October is when you can harvest the nuts. And at the back of the book, it tells you how to take care of them and plant them and what you can expect of when they germinate. So for uh, butternut, I have to, you know, when I get those nuts, basically I take off the husk, I separate them, I soak them, I sort of lay them down horizontally in some loamy soil and I keep them cool for 120 days and uh, you don't want to sow these directly in containers so they have a huge tap root. So really awesome advice here. Um, for example, some other things like say buffalo berries, you're supposed to separate them, uh, scarify them for 30 minutes in vinegar, and then keep them cool for 90 days in your fridge before planting. And for ramps, there's a lot of information online as to how to prepare them. Just remember to keep your seeds uh, somewhat moist. You don't want to like dry them out. Uh, they may end up you know, not having great germination if you do that. Jackpot guys, that's what I'm looking for. You see these little beads right there? And right here. You are definitely ooh. <laughs> there we go guys. That's uh that's the wild leek there and that's the seeds I'm looking for. And as I look around, they are all around me. I've into a patch of it. I knew I remembered this spot. How exciting. And there's some more of what I believe to be the blue bead lily right here. Um, so I'm going to collect some of these so I can have some lilies in my garden. All right, so I've got lilies in their own little separate container here. Ah, Royce is helping to knock these things off the stock. I don't need that right now, Royce. I need to get these off of here. All right, from that little spot there, that's pretty good. And I think this is a more sustainable way of uh, collecting ramps for your own collection without digging out the bulbs. So I'll be able to have my own plants in a period of time obviously so all right successful harvest so if I plant the seeds that I got now um, it takes two uh, winters to germinate so they'll come up in a couple of springs so what I can do now to speed the process to get a year ahead is basically put them 
uh, room temperature and some moist vermiculite for about 60 days and then do 90 days in the fridge at about 3 Celsius. And if you want, you can repeat that cycle and then plant and hopefully you'll get them that spring. But um, you can speed the process, but these do take a bit of time, but it makes it exciting. You know, uh, I always like to plant myself a little garden um, in the fall to see what I get in the spring. And now I'll have a couple of springs to find out what's gonna happen if they're gonna take. But if they do, it's pretty amazing. They spread, but they are slow growers. You know, the seeds that I'm collecting today are from plants that are at least seven years old. And that's why ramps, um, you know, they're getting a little bit, you know, they are threatened actually in a lot of areas because people have overharvested them, dug out the bulbs, killed the whole plant, um, not been very sustainable about it. So I'm proposing this is a more sustainable way um, to, to get your ramps is to get some seeds and plant them uh, in a really you know, rich soil. And then you'll have many ramps for years to come for yourself. So when I harvest them, I don't take the bulbs. I just take leaves. When I harvest in the spring, I take one of two leaves. I wanna leave a leaf on there for photosynthesis to occur so that the bulb uh, can store some energy um, to get through the winter. You'll end up killing off the plant if you try to keep chopping off all the leaves. And I never really take more uh, than I need when I'm out harvesting. And the same should go for when you guys are harvesting seeds for your native wildflower or wild edible garden. Um, you wanna save some um, for mother nature and for other fellow foraging enthusiasts. So I only take what I need, which is a very small amount. Ooh, look down here. Look at this beautiful turkey tail. This has some blues in it. Gorgeous. Wow, it's been a great year for turkey tail. So one thing I want to show you guys that's super disappointing this year is uh, the gypsy moths. So the gypsy moths have been defoliating our uh, native tree plants. These are an invasive moth and this is an egg sac. So lots of eggs in here for the gypsy moth, it's disgusting. Um, I'm just gonna kill these ones here. You know, there's just been a ton of them around on the trees. Oh, there's another, oh gosh, look at them all in here, just everywhere. So I had tons of them at the cabin this year. I see them everywhere. So anytime I see an egg sac, I try to destroy it. Well, Royce and me have had a really successful foray in the woods to collect ramp seeds. And I've got a couple other things for my native wildflower garden that will be put into the ground so I can enjoy it for years to come. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's a little bit different, uh, something that I really haven't shared with you guys before, but I thought you might be interested in it. All right, don't forget to subscribe and like the video and share it. Remember, I'm still trying to get up to 40,000 subscribers by next year. I hope you guys have a great week as always. Take care.